Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. What's up? It is Winning Cures Everything. This is the AFC South and the NFC South preview show. Hold up. All right, all right. I'm Gary. And I'm Chris. You can find us over at winningcureseverything.com. If you're watching on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button. Leave us some comments. Tell us what you like, what you don't like. If you think we got stuff right, if you think we got it wrong, tell us your thoughts in the comments section. We'd love to hear from you, and we will actually comment back. So keep that in mind when you are trying to trash talk. Anyway, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, if you would, hit that subscribe button. Leave us a nice five-star review. Share the show out. We're on Spotify. We're on Google Podcasts. We're on all your favorite podcast apps. You can find us on Twitter. I'm at GaryWCE. I'm at Chris B. Giannini. And the show is at Winning Cures. You can also get us on Facebook. You can find all of this over at winningcureseverything.com. The show is brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's premier sports gambling destination. You can find information on all six of their incredible sports books over at tunicatravel.com. You can find more about that in the description below. You ready to fire into this? Come on. First team up, the Houston Texans. 11-5 and five last year. They won the division. To win the division this year, they are plus 300. Their strength of schedule projected this year is the number one most difficult schedule in the NFL. Their turnover margin last year, they were second in the NFL at plus 13. They were a top five team as far as turnover luck is concerned. If you want to know more about that, go check out Warren Sharp. Get any, any number of analytics sites. They will explain what turnover luck is. Over under eight and a half this year. They are plus 110 to go over, minus 130 to go under. As far as yards per play, they were number 17 in the league last year, averaged 5.5 yards per play. On defense, they were number 12, averaged giving up 5.4 yards per play. Head coach is Bill O'Brien. He calls the plays for the offense. Their offensive coordinator is Tim Kelly. He was the tight ends coach. He got bumped up. Uh, they signed quarterback A.J. McCarron as a backup, and they signed left tackle Matt Khalil on defense. They've got Romeo, uh, Romeo Cornell back as defensive coordinator. They signed cornerback Bradley Roby. They signed uh, free safety to Sean Gibson. Uh, they drafted cornerback Lonnie Johnson Jr. from Kentucky. They are a projected favorite in seven games. Now, the defense got a little bit younger. They lost Kareem Jackson, a few other guys. Uh, offense, still running with Deshaun Jackson. Still got, uh, uh, you know, the kid from Texas. What, what, what was his name? Uh, who, am I, who am I thinking? I don't know who you're talking about. I know they've got the Hopkins. Back. Oh, Lamar Miller. No, no, no. Uh, uh, well, they got, they just traded for Duke Johnson. No, they let Foreman go. They just traded for Duke Johnson. Did they? Yep. Foreman's wow. now with the Colts. How crazy is that? Okay. Hey, this is nuts. I, I should I should really do no, that's cool. last minute. Well, stuff. all this happened last week. And so, so yeah. We're and recording I, I this on August eleventh. August eleventh, so. yes. So I with with the number one strength of schedule projected and the fact that turnover regression will occur, this is a pretty average team. They're a projected favorite in seven games. I have them eight and eight. I have them eight and eight as well. Okay. Okay. Tell me tell me what you think about them. I mean, what's like JJ Watt, he'll stay on the field this year, I would imagine, right? Uh, maybe. Um, I mean, I, I'll tell you. I mean, Clowney is their best rusher. I mean, Watt gets yeah. all the praise and all the glory and all the credit. Um, he's the face of the team, but but I think their best defensive player is Clowney. Um, yes. Honey Badger. They got younger. Um, I think this defense is going to be good. I think Romeo Cornell. Ha- the reason they are so good. At, at turnover margin, I'll know a lot of it is luck in, in the stats that, that, that are out there, but but they're a ball hawking team. Romeo Cornell has a very aggressive style of defense that he calls, yes. and it works. It works really well for him. I think adding offensively Duke Johnson, because Lamar Miller is not. I think Lamar Miller is the definition of eight and eight. I think he's the definition <laughs> of a very. He's not going to fumble the ball. He's he's not going to lead the league in rushing. Duke Johnson gives them a level of explosiveness. That Deontay Foreman never could. Um, he's he's worlds better. They've improved there. Um, Hopkins stay healthy. 
think he's going to be a stud. Hey, I, yeah, I, he always is. And then they got uh, Kiki and um, um, Fuller. I think the offense is going to be good. Bill O'Brien, yeah, he, he might be predictable. The offensive line, still really bad. But I think this team is going to win some games. I think they're going to be 8-8. Eight and eight. I don't know that they're going to win 11 again, but I think 8-8 eight and eight might be good enough in the AFC to compete for a wild card. It puts them in the running. It might yeah. not win a wild card spot, but it's going to put them in the running for it. Yeah, I can understand that. I can understand that. Uh, let's move on from the Texans. The Indianapolis Colts. 10-6 and six last year. Bounced back with Andrew Luck coming back to win the division this year. They are minus 125. They are the favorites. Strength of schedule, number 16. So right dead in the middle. Uh, turnover margin, they were number 13 last year. They were plus two. Over under is nine and a half. The juice on that to go over is minus 150. To go under is plus 130. They are a projected favorite in nine games this year. So that's where the nine, of course, comes from. Uh, total yards per play, they were number 11 on offense last year. Average 5.8 yards per play on defense, number nine. They gave up 5.4. That's where this team made a big difference is on defense. Defensive, uh, defensive coordinator Matt Eberflus signed uh, defensive end Justin Houston. They drafted cornerback Rocky Sin from Temple. But other than that, like they, they really didn't do anything to their starting lineup, right? That, their defense is set. Uh, on offense, of course, Frank Reich, offensive guy from Philly. Offensive coordinator is Nick Sirianni. They signed wide receiver Devin Funches uh, to replace Moncrief. They drafted wide receiver Paris Campbell, who I think is going to be great from Ohio State. Look, I've got this team at 10-6 and six again. I think as long as you've got a healthy Andrew Luck, and there's, of course, concern about his calf and everything else, um, I think the running game is good. I think the team itself is really good. I think Frank Reich is a great head coach. I think so, too. This general manager and head coach combination has improved this team so much in just two years. Yeah. It's rare to see that. The Browns have done it with with uh, with what they've done. This organization has done it, too. Yeah. And, and, I mean, they went from being soft in the trenches in both sides of the line to, to being one of the toughest – these guys have built offensive linemen. They've drafted offensive linemen, and they are bullies now. Man, they used to be cupcakes. They were so soft. Every team in the league could come in with a with a mediocre front seven and push them around. Andrew Luck was getting beat up like nobody else's business. Now it's just not happening. They have an identity that is different than everybody else, which is we're just going to be tougher in the trenches, I, I, I like this team. I like what they're doing. I got them 11 wins. I think they're going to be a game better than what they were last year. 11 wins. It, I think they win the division, and and I, I just don't see anybody else in this division close to them. I think I, the I, gap think between agree. talent and the organizations, the way these four teams are ran, all three of them are going in different directions. And, and, and the Colts are, are going in the opposite direction of up. Do you have any concerns about Luck and, and the Cavs all. stuff? Not at all. You don't think so? No. Okay. He's been around long enough. He doesn't need to take a snap in preseason. Okay. I mean, this, okay. Is, this is not – now, if we were a week from, from playing, yeah, it, it'd be a little bit of concern. It's we're, August we're still 11th. a month out. Yeah. But we got a month to go. No, I'm not concerned at all. Okay. Okay. Moving on, the Jacksonville Jaguars. 5-11 and 11 last year, coming off of uh, basically an AFC championship, I guess, appearance, right? They, they lose to the Patriots there. Uh, to win the division this year, they are plus 500. Their strength of schedule, number 10. Uh, turnover margin, they were 30th last year. That is third worst at minus 12. Head coach is Doug Maroney. Uh, we liked him when he got hired uh, midseason a couple of years ago. Eight wins is the over-under. Plus 100 is the juice on the over. Minus 120 is the juice on the under. As far as yards per play, number 30 in the league on offense last year. Average 4.8 yards per play. Their offensive coordinator, they have hired Minnesota OC John DeFilippo. They signed quarterback Nick Foles. They got rid of Blake Bortles. They drafted right tackle Jawan Taylor from Florida. On defense, they were number five in the league. We, we talked about... You know, uh, maybe they're not as good as they they were. It was it was mainly offense last year. Oh no, the offense, offense was turning terrible. the ball over, offense um, not being able to produce anything really. D 
Defensive coordinator is Todd Walsh. They signed linebacker Jake Ryan. They drafted linebacker defensive end Josh Allen from Kentucky, who I really think might have been the best player in the draft. Yep. I mean, he's he's that unbelievable. I completely agree with that. They are a projected favorite in only three games this year. I think they're they're going to win more than that. I've got them at seven and nine. I trust Maroney as a head coach. I like the team. Uh, they were really bad on offense last year. I think Foles makes less mistakes than Bortles did. Oh, not just um, less mistakes. He's going to make plays that Bortles I think, yeah, can't I think, make. I think he will make plays. Um, so I like Nick Foles here. I don't think that Foles turns them into a Super Bowl contender immediately. No, no, no. no. They've got growing to do. But, but I do like the moves that they made on defense. I like the the changing on offense. I don't know how much I trust DiFilippo as the offensive but, coordinator. But Doug Marone's going to gonna call plays. Um, but no, DiFilippo's calling plays. Mm. That's what they say. I know. I mean, we'll see. I know. I'll so, be shocked if that happens. DiFilippo I'm, got fired last year in the middle of the season. Yeah. I've, so I've I, got him at 7 and 9. Okay. So this is one of those weird situations. If you watched our other previews, I brought this up at least once. Fill out a little graph, shows you all the games. I literally fill this thing out, wins and losses, teams I think will win a game, teams I think I don't win a game, whatever. Don't look at the record. When I'm completely done with all 32 teams, I write down how many wins the team has, how many teams will. This is not a good science. It's a terrible way to do this. I think this team's going to be an 8-8 eight eight team. I, I believe they're right there in the mix of every game. I don't think they get blown out a lot. I think they're a well-coached team. I think they're going to play hard. I think they're run, they've boosted that offensive line. I think Leonard Fournette has a healthy year, and, and, and he's older. He's more mature. He's, he's showing up for training camp, and he looks great. He dropped some weight. He's gotten faster. Like, I like this team. My record that came out when I did my little Mickey Mouse science here was 5-11. and 11. I'm I'm a hundred percent positive. Hear me when I say this. I'm a hundred percent positive. They're going to be better than five and eleven. I just know how football works. I think these guys are good. Yeah, I do. So I have I have no idea what to give as my official pick. I'm probably going to go in the middle. I'll say seven and nine. I'm okay. Gonna, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drop a game from what I thought because my little experiment. I mean, it's what in the science I wanted it to a, be. It's a difficult schedule. It's a tough schedule. It's but this is a tough team. Is a tough team. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, Tom Coughlin's still running this team. Yes. And that is, you might like him or hate him. He's a tough SOB. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. So we both got seven and nine. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to, that's my official pick. All right, seven and nine. That sounds good to me. Far cry from my signs. Yes. Well, I mean, they were five and 11 last year, so they wouldn't have been I, that crazy. But, but I think this seems, I just think they're better this year. I think the defense is, is significantly better than the offense, but I think the offense improves. I mean, as long as you're not number 30 in yards per play. Like well, yeah, you they'll, be, they'll go up. They'll, yeah, they'll go just up. be better. Moving on, the Tennessee Titans. That is our, our home state team, I guess. Nine and seven last year, which is pretty good, right? I mean, for all the stuff that they lost and everything else, went, like in the middle of the season, there was a lot of different stuff happening. Still went nine and seven. We're right there on the cusp of a playoff berth. Uh, we like head coach Mike Vrabel like to Vrabel win a lot. to win the division. They are plus six fifty. They are in dead last as far as favorites go. Strength of schedule is number seven this year. It's tough. Pretty tough schedule. Turnover margin. They were twenty first. They were minus one last year. Uh, Blaine Gabbard had to play a lot, uh, and he did not help that. Um, over under is eight this year. Over juice is plus one ten. The under is minus one thirty. Total yards per play on offense, they were number 23 in the league. Average 5.3 yards per play. On defense, number 7. Average 5.3 yards per play. So, dead even there. Offensive coordinator this year is Arthur Smith. Son of FedEx CEO, chairman, founder, whatever. Um, Fred Fred Smith. Smith. They signed guard Roger Saffold. They signed wide receiver Adam Humphreys. They signed quarterback Ryan Tannehill. They drafted wide receiver A.J. Brown. They've got some talent at receiver. Yes. I mean, just offense in general, they've got players. That's right. True. Defense, they got players. Defensive end Cameron Wake, they signed. They drafted defensive tackle Jeffrey Simmons. He won't play this year, but uh, defense coordinator is Dean Pease. They are a projected favorite in only four games this year. They're an underdog in eight. They're a pick in four games. 
I like this team. I think that Mariota stays healthy this year. Even when he's not, I think Tannehill comes in. I liked Tannehill in Miami. I've got him at 9-7. and seven. He's way better than Blaine Gabbert. Yes. So, so when Mariota gets hurt, you just don't yeah. throw the season away. I think they're nine and seven this year. I don't know that that's a playoff team, but nine and seven, I think they stay about the same. Uh, I like this team. I think they're tough. I like Vrabel. I think he makes really good decisions. He understands how to work with the personnel that he's got, and this is a talented team. I, I like, thought I think this team is a lot like the Jaguars when I looked at it. I think they're going to be eight and eight. I know eight and eight is just a cop out record because um, it's just the way the NFL set up. I think they're actually going to be a little worse than that. I think they're going to struggle because I have no idea what Smith is going to be like as an OC. I think these things matter. Vrabel's not going to be a lot of help with On the offense. offense. He's yeah. a defensive guy. I think he's a really good head coach. I, I don't – I think they underachieved last year because of offensive coaching. Yeah. I think we took a step backwards being the Titans – in coaching well, it took, offensively. It took LaFleur a long time to figure out, oh, wait, we've got Derrick Henry in the backfield. Like, you remember the first six to eight games. Yeah, but if they try to do that for 16 games, Henry will be done by week five. Uh, but here's the thing. They got Deion Lewis. But they got other the guys The problem back is, there. is that's not what helped them do those things last year. Yeah. When Henry went off, Deion Lewis had like four touches in those games. Yeah. So it's just you got to find a way to make it all work, and the offense, the offensive coaching staff was not able to do that. I don't year. trust Smith. I'm I'm gonna say this team is a six and ten team. Six and, and that 10. hurts me. That hurts me. Well, I mean, the that schedule is me. really difficult. I think um, I think they're below my little science experiment where I did the schedule. I got them four and twelve. I think they're whew. better than that because I think Vrabel Vrabel is gonna make this team be better than that. Yeah, and they've got a lot of offensive talent. Yes, the, they do. The problem well, and is and a lot of is, defensive talent. Like defense we, is. I'm not. Is, I'm not worried about their defense. That's the problem. Is that, that doesn't concern me. I think their defense is going to be one of the. They just got to be able 10 to defense in yeah, the league. You just got to be able to score. Points. Offensively, they were terrible. Yeah. Can they be not terrible this year? We'll I see. I don't know. We will see. 